Welcome to the Grit.org podcast with Colby Harris and Brian Harbin. In these episodes, they speak to top achievers in athletics and business to understand the habits and mindset they apply in order to build more grit. Welcome back to the Grit.org podcast. My name is Colby Harris, and alongside me here today is Brian Harbin. We also have with us today our guest, Division One baseball player, Aiden Sweat. Aiden, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, this is my first podcast, so I'm really excited. Absolutely. Well, we're super excited to have you here. So nonetheless, Aiden, born and raised in Fernian Beach, Florida, you've been a gifted athlete from a young age, playing basketball and baseball through middle school. You always had a standout. You always were a standout performer due to your amazing work ethic, hustle, and leadership. Once into high school, attending Fernandina Beach High School, Aiden fully committed himself to baseball and went all in. Preferably playing shortstop, but able to play any part of the field, Aiden landed on the varsity baseball team as a freshman. At just 5'5", 140 pounds freshman year, Aiden showed up and gave it his all day in, day out, and made sure he really earned that varsity letter. He went on to be a four-year letter winner, earned Rookie of the Year freshman year, was named All-County Mr. Hustle sophomore year, was selected All-County his junior year, and lastly, as a member of the class of 2020, Aiden lost the majority of his senior season of baseball to the hands of COVID-19, although he was not deterred. Just before COVID hit, in November of 2019, he signed to play collegiate baseball at the University of North Florida. In 2021, Aiden had a stellar freshman season, being unanimously selected to the A-Sun all-freshman team after he appeared in all 45 games, starting 44 while hitting a 282 with 28 runs, 50 hits, 14 doubles, 3 triples, and 22 RBIs. Aiden is now a sophomore at UNF, and when he's not training or focusing on school, he can be found fishing, golfing, and spending time with his friends and family. So, nonetheless, rolling right into it, Aiden, super excited to have you here today, highlighting your story and how through consistent hard work and dedication, anything's possible. So as some of our listeners may know, I'm also from Fernandina Beach and had the pleasure of growing up with Aiden from sixth grade to present day. He was one of my first friends in Fernandina, quickly introducing himself to me on our very first day of school, as that's just the guy he is. So he might be known for his skills on the field, but it's the man he is off the field that impresses me so much. So Aiden, thank you again for being here. Diving right in, starting from the beginning, can you tell us a bit about growing up in Fernandina and some of the life lessons that come with growing up in such a small, tightly knit town like Fernandina. Uh, Yeah, so Fernandina Beach, uh, it's kind of a small town where everyone knows everybody. When I was younger, it's like when you're walking into the grocery store with your parents, you can hardly see someone you don't know. Um, So, you know, that always kind of kept me on my toes, being respectful and stuff like that, uh, trying to stay out of trouble, knowing everyone around town. Uh, Ford got back to my mom that I was smart mouthing around, you know, things weren't going to be looking good for me. but Fernandino is awesome. I kind of grew up with the same kids since preschool, um, you know, all throughout kindergarten through high school. So, you know, seeing how we all grown up, graduated together, that's pretty cool. Um, some of these kids are still my best friend to this day, you know, as you're sitting here right next to me doing a podcast, pretty awesome. But, uh, you know, pretty awesome. So, so for the life lessons you mentioned, I gotta have to thank my parents for those. Um, they really taught me everything I know. My dad's a general contractor, so growing up working with him, you know, taught me everything I know about hard work to this day. And my mom for teaching me my manners and all that stuff. So I'm really appreciative to them. Um, and yeah, you know, they they taught me to believe in yourself and put. Uh, you can do anything you put your mind to. So, yeah, absolutely. And there's definitely few places like Fernandina and having the pleasure of meeting your parents before. There's definitely few people like your parents as well. So Aiden, as mentioned, you played just about every sport growing up, but can you tell us from your perspective, what is it about baseball that you enjoy so much and what really had you so obsessed at a young age? Yeah. Sports for me growing up was everything, you know, that's all I did. Uh, my, I have a younger brother and a younger sister. But uh, usually me and my younger brother outside all the time, you know, uh, we played anything from wiffle ball, football, soccer, kickball, like anything you could think of. Um, You know, when we got home from school, mom's mom's rule was you had to finish your homework before you uh, could go outside and play. So we'd get home, hustle in, do our homework so we could go outside and figure out some sort of game to play. Um, For the most part. That was amazing, you know, until our competitive nature got in the way. 
sometimes ended up in some little bit of a scuffle that got us in tr into some trouble, but uh, sports was awesome. And organized sports as I got older a little bit, uh, that was really like my, my prime time, what I love to do. Um, I played basketball, flag football, and baseball growing up. Uh, baseball, obviously my favorite. Flag football was pretty fun. Only played that for a couple years and I'm a little guy. So basketball, obviously not going to be sticking around doing that. But uh, yeah, getting to see my friends during the week at practice and everything uh, during the weekends with our games, hanging out all the time. Um, those are the kind of things that I look forward to spending time with my buddies uh, during organized sports growing up. Yeah, so Aiden, that brings us to the next topic, obviously baseball, which brings us here today, right? So we know obviously you were a stellar athlete overall and, and played basically anything that got you moving, but what was it about baseball that made you want to go all in? Or I guess, were there any early moments where you knew that was the one? Yeah, so from a young age, I can always remember baseball was my main focus. I would always be begging my brother, he would want to play football or basketball or something like that. I was like, come on, let's play baseball. Let's rake the leaves in the yard into a pile, make some diving catches, play wiffle ball, something like that. Um, you know, so baseball was always like my main focus, my favorite thing to do. Um, looking back on it, I don't really know if there's one specific moment. Uh, thinking about it, maybe when I was around like 12 or 13 years old, you play in uh, this your age category. And I got called up to play with some of the older kids, which was, um, you know, kind of a uh, honor because you see it, you stay after to watch them practice stuff, see what they do, try to copy their batting stances, all that stuff. So getting invited to go play a tournament with them was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, when I was, I got called up to play with them, it's kind of, a little bit of a confidence booster because it, when you start having success, you start feel like you could fit in. You're like, wow, these guys are a couple years older than me. You know, I could do this. I'm I'm only 12 years old. These kids are 15. They're bigger, faster, stronger than me. You know, I could fit in with these guys. So um, besides that, uh, I don't really know if there's anything else that really stands out besides, you know, the camaraderie that I had with my buddies growing up. I can remember the opening days we had at the Babe Ruth Field on the island. There's hundreds of people there, big water slides. You're eating Skittles before the game, ice pops, you know. Probably not the best thing for you, but you're down in Gatorade with yeah. your friends. You're having fun. So right. those are the kind of things that I remember, um, you know, just hanging out with some of my best friends growing up. Having fun, where it all really starts. And baseball, unfortunately, is a sport that I never really got into. But if I ever had a reason to start liking it, it was definitely just watching the passion that you had for it. So as mentioned in the introduction, something I respect so much about you is you are more than just an athlete. You're always willing to lend a helping hand or help in any way for that matter. So when you were in middle school, you won the Florida Gatorade Sportsmanship Award, a statewide award given to one who excels in the classroom and on the field, as well as shows the utmost respect for players and coaches. For our younger listeners or really any leaders out there for that matter, can you share some insight into what you believe makes a great teammate or a great leader? Yeah, I think uh, being a leader starts with a couple things and it starts with taking care of yourself first because, um, you know, if you don't have yourself in check, how are you supposed to be able to lead others? Uh, in high school, I did FCA, which is Fellowship of Christian Athletes, uh, the baseball team would meet every Friday morning. We would bring donuts and chocolate milk. And uh, we would meet in a room before school and talk about things like this, you know, leadership goals, um, team goals, just, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I remember one quote that our FCA leader said to us. I have it written down in one of my notebooks still to this day. Uh, he said, a leader of one can lead many. If you can't lead none, you can't lead any. If you can't lead one, you can't lead any. So I almost had it yeah, there. I was like, but yeah, I mean, I think there's some truth in that because you know, how are you supposed to try and like be a leader for other people if you don't have yourself in check? Um, I think another thing being a leader, very important to being a leader is uh, never doing something that you would, you wouldn't, never asking someone to do something that you wouldn't do yourself. Um, I kind of got that. I watched the last dance documentary of Michael Jordan. That's right really love it and uh he said that and i was like wow that's really true you never want to be you know that guy that's 
out there like ordering people around. No, if you're if you're trying to urge your teammates to hustle on and off the field, you got to be the first one doing stuff like that too. So, I think it's really important to lead by example. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'm not a very vocal leader. I try to just lead by example. You know, put my head down, do what I know how to do, and hopefully they'll they'll follow me. Um, I think being last thing is probably being selfless because you know in life as well as sports there's ups and downs and everyone's going to make mistakes everyone's going to fail nobody's perfect so uh i think great part in being a leader is being selfless you know taking the time out to be there for someone when they need you the most when they're down you got to pick them up and uh i think that's one of the reasons why i've made so many friends in sports to this day is because your friends on the your uh teammates on the field and your best friends off the field as well so yeah absolutely and leading from the trenches right brian something right. we talk a lot about and that's definitely great insight especially since one of our lines of our great creed is actually i'll never ask someone to do something i'm not willing to do that's always heavily resonated with me and again same thing uh you can't be much of a leader if you're asking a bunch of people just pointing fingers and screaming so every great leader can definitely take that and implement it into their own day-to-day -day. so nonetheless after middle school you went on fbhs and you had your sights set on playing for the varsity baseball team again freshman year you're coming in at a whopping 5'5", 140 pounds, give or take a little bit. So from middle school to high school level, level everything and everyone seems to be a little bit bigger, stronger, faster. This was just a big step overall for you. So I can imagine it was quite intimidating as well. Can you tell us more about the transition and how you overcame any doubts or fears you had at that time as you just took your game to the new level? Yeah, I definitely wasn't the most physically uh, appealing <laughs> second baseman for the varsity team uh but you know when you're 14 15 years old as a freshman in high school you're you're going to go up against other kids that are seniors 18 19 years old that are essentially grown men compared to what i was you know um nevertheless i knew going into high school i had a goal in mind was to play for coach roland it was his last year being the varsity head coach he coached for nearly 40 years fields named after him even now so. yeah very special and i was like you know this is my this is my only chance i'm i want to play for coach and i want to make the varsity team so uh you know it was hard definitely there was a lot of hard work that had to be put into it but it's uh nothing that i didn't think that i could overcome with a little bit of hard work um derek jeter was one of my role models growing up and he had a quote, I have this poster still to this day in my room. My mom got it for me when I was younger. Uh, one of his most famous quotes says, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And uh, I really believe in that because I think you can, I believe in you can do anything you put your mind to. And I think that was just instilled in me from when I was a young kid and I truly do believe it. So, you know, after a tough fall season, freshman year, um, school workouts practice you know trying to learn how to be a high schooler growing up uh i was lucky enough to make the team in the spring season um i didn't really play much at the beginning of the season but nevertheless i was sitting the bench for the first time in my life never really happened before i always made sure you know growing up in babe ruth i was like i'm not going to give the coach a a decision but to put me in the lineup i want to play you know so first time in my life i was sitting the bench but uh i wanted to attack that the only way that i knew how to and i was just trying to be the best teammate and everything else that i could be you know keeping the energy up and while i was sitting on the bench watching the game from a different angle for once i was also learning you know i would sit right by coach in the dugout and he would teach me the game as i'm sitting there watching everyone else play it uh so yeah, Coach Roland, I remember ha about halfway through the season, we were at, we had a team meeting and we we had a pretty good we were having a pretty good season so far, but some of the guys were struggling and he was trying to motivate us one day after practice and he said giving us some speech about hard work and I remember sitting there and he said one thing that stood out to me. He said, "Sometimes you have to work while you wait." And I was like, "Man, you know, Right now, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm sitting there watching for the first time in my life, and I was like, but I'm still gonna continue to put my head head down, work as hard as I can to maybe get a chance. You never know what'll happen. Um, 
you know, towards the end of the year, I I ended up getting a couple chances to play, and I found some success whenever my name was called for the first time, and you know, ended up helping the team win a couple games, which is pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. You contributed in some way. And like Tom Brady always says, you got to be prepared for that moment because it might only come once. And if you don't follow through with it, then you don't know where you'll find yourself in the future if you don't capitalize on that one opportunity. So you obviously overcame any adversity in your way as you earned rookie of the year that freshman year. Clearly at this time, as you had spent your freshman season playing varsity, your determination and love for the game definitely did rub off on everyone. Like you said, even if you were just hype man at every practice and every game, you played your part and I'm sure everyone was so thankful to have you there. Uh, but nonetheless, high school level is not only more challenging competition, but as you said, adjusting to the schedule. So it requires more commitment and more practice, more training in general. It takes a lot of sacrifice to be at all these practices and meetings. So can you share with us what it's been like for you to just lock in the past few years to continue to chase the dream of making it to the collegiate level and beyond? Absolutely. It definitely does take a lot of commitment. That's for sure. Um, I remember, especially freshman year, I was taking some honors classes, things like that. I didn't get to bed until midnight some nights. My mom would say, hey, time for bed. I'm like, mom, I still got some more couple hours of homework to do. I got to study. I got a big test tomorrow. So, you know, learning how to do that was definitely a challenge for me, um, which I was more than happy to accept. Uh, I try to keep my grades up. I take... Uh, a lot of pride in having good grades because I think that how you do one thing is how you do everything. So if I want to be great on the baseball field, you know, I got to be great in the classroom as well. If I want to be a leader on the baseball field, I want to be a leader in the classroom as well. Our team got to keep a good GPA. You know, that was one of our goals in high school to have a very high team GPA. So I wanted to be a part of that. Um, you know, I really had to learn how to manage my time a little bit better because not too great at that. I started playing things out a little bit better and focusing on the task that was at hand because you can't be worrying about schoolwork while you're at baseball practice. You're not completely focused at baseball practice if you're worrying about your test later. So I had to really learn how to do that. If I'm doing schoolwork at lunch, you know, focus on your schoolwork. You don't have to be talking to your friends when you're at baseball practice focus at baseball practice, stuff like that. So I think it's really important to learn how to mend your time better. And freshman year, I was in for a rude awakening for that. Uh, you know, same thing for me was kind of, it was the same thing last year for me in college. I was a freshman again, kind of at the bottom of the totem pole. I was learning how to do everything. Um, it was my first time living alone in an apartment. So I had some chores that I had to do, start washing the dishes, doing my own laundry, you know, keeping the house clean. So I had to throw that into my schedule as well. And it, it, it's difficult at times. You feel like you're backed up. You can never catch up sometimes. But whenever you figure out how to schedule your day a little bit better, manage your time well, it helps a lot. Aiden, I love what you said a minute ago about, you know, being on the bench for the first time and how that affected you and and for any young athlete out there that's such a huge takeaway is like being able to influence the game like when you're not in the game and learning to be a great teammate learning how the coaches think and so that's such a great nugget and something that um you know i really appreciate you sharing that and you know i wanted to ask you about motivation because you know fernandina you know small town tight-knit community that a lot of people that were at your high school games were the same people that we're at your t-ball games whether it's family members coaches teachers and um so what value have you found in having such a strong support system around you and is that something that you use as motivation on days where maybe you're feeling like going 100 percent? absolutely i think growing up in fernandina is the biggest reason why i am where i am today hmm. um you know my teammates growing up they were all my best friends so if we had a bad game, we had a bad game together. If we lost, it was we lost together. It wasn't very indiv individualistic. And uh, the same thing goes for like my family. Um, they're really everything to me. They taught me everything that I know and they were there for me growing up. They did everything for me, driving me around, 
waiting around for me after practice. Sometimes it was late nights. I, if I wanted to get work in, mom would sit out in the parking lot and wait for me to get done. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to thank them enough for that because they really do mean everything to me. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. And you definitely did have a strong support system. I mean, I even remember uh, this is our homecoming king actually as well over here. Me and all of our best friends were on the court and we're all walking in saying, yeah, I, I hope Aiden wins too. You know, like, I don't even, I don't even want to win. I hope Aiden wins too. So uh, nonetheless, I've loved being a part of that support system and, and there really is nothing like Ferrandina. So I can definitely second that point. But nonetheless, after a very successful sophomore and junior season, you po you posted 357 batting average with nine doubles, a triple and 14 RBIs during your junior year. You're on track to have an exciting senior year. But before we get to that, in November of 2019, you decided to commit and continue your career at the University of North Florida as an Osprey while studying sports management. Can you share with us some insight into the recruiting process and how you ultimately decided that UNF was where you wanted to be? Yeah, so after my sophomore season in summer ball, I was I played pretty well and I was lucky enough to come in contact with the UNF coaching staff and they you know had a couple phone calls and they said they were going to come watch me play in our fall season so I was like this is it was all really new to me nobody in my family has ever been to college yet so I'm the oldest sibling and I was like all right I'm just gonna keep doing what I've been doing put my head down keep working hard um, I guess I did something right because they called me back I had a couple phone a couple more phone calls with the coaching staff I ended up going on a visit that fall to UNF and I really liked it uh, it's close to home all my family and friends could come watch me play. You know, I thought that was a big plus. Uh, sounded right up my alley because they, they've been there for me my entire life. I wouldn't want to go anywhere across the country where they couldn't come watch me play easily. So UNF sounded right up my alley, and I like the coaches. Uh, they're awesome, teaching me a lot, learning a lot, having a great time here so far. Had a great freshman season. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward, looking forward to this season just really grateful for the opportunity that they gave me. Definitely. And I'm sure it's one of those things that you could just feel it was right. And I really can't imagine the pressure either as you're going through that process. I know some people talk about enjoying the pressure of having to get that, you know, college offer. And some people are like, man, I feel overwhelmed by having these coaches at my games and stuff like that. So nonetheless, following your commitment, the world would in fact be turned upside down with arguably the biggest turn of events in our lifetime, the COVID-19 pandemic. So sure enough, right as your season baseball season was set to ramp up in March of 2020, we went on the longest spring break of our lives, <laughs> uh, never returning as students of Fernandina Beach High School. And one thing that just hit me really hard was, in fact, thinking about you and the loss of your baseball season. I know you really just want to share those final moments with your teammates, with your family, you know, senior night, one last run at the playoffs. When I realized you weren't going to have that opportunity, it hit a lot harder than any of the losses I personally had. So, it was definitely a curveball you never could have anticipated. So what was that like for you? And what effects did it have on you as you had to close out your high school season unexpectedly and kind of, you know, with some cards on the table? The, yeah, we definitely left some cards on the table. That's for sure. Uh, COVID kind of took the wind out of our sails, to be honest, especially for me. Um, I remember we were playing Yuli High School, which was our rival. Uh, it was a uh, Friday, I believe. We got out of school early. We had a game that day, and we started hearing the news of COVID nineteen. They were going to shut down, the, shut down the schools. Nobody really knew it was coming, so we we were like, "This might be our last time on the field together." We've been playing together since we been playing t ball, and now it might be our last run. We don't know. Hmm. We ended up winning the game one to zero, and after the game, we were kind of sitting in the huddle, just looking at each other, like. What are we gonna do if this is if this is our last game? How are we supposed to know? We might we have games next week. They might not cancel school. We might have that, but I just remember that feeling whenever we got the phone call that school was canceled. They're gonna shut it down. I was kind of defeated, to say the least. Um, I really wanted to experience all those things that you talked about earlier: senior night, uh, a last playoff run, the final game, because I was playing for the varsity team for three years up to that point. And I saw how much 
those nights and those days, those experiences meant to the other kids that I've been playing with, the upperclassmen. And I knew how much it meant to them, and I knew it even meant even more to me because I love Fernandina Beach, you know, it's my heart and soul. So really wanted to experience that with some of my best friends, and I was a little bit disappointed, to say the least, for a very long time, but sometimes you gotta deal with adversity and I think everything happens for a reason. That's probably why I am where I am today. Definitely agree. And I think that's what is the toughest part about is any great success or any thing that you work really hard for it usually comes with a peak, you know, a, a, a sign off moment where you can close it out, close that chapter of your life. And that was the toughest part about being COVID babies is we weren't able to have those final moments. Um, but nonetheless, again, Time did, in fact, pass. I feel like we've returned to some sense of normalcy. We're still talking about online classes and stuff like that, which are almost better, as we've kind of discovered. But nonetheless, although school was cut in March, I would say the real heat of COVID came in late 2020 when it was then time for you to start at UNF. So still kind of battling this. So for you, um, from high school ball to starting college, in your first few months, again, that same transition, what were you seeing that were just some immediate key differences from pivoting again, high school into college and just what would come with that new experience? Yeah, uh, it was, college was definitely way different than high school for me last year. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier about in high school, you kind of knew everybody. You could walk from class to class and say, hey, to every single person you see in the hallway almost. And in college, it was way different. I walked into a locker room full of guys I never met before. Mm -hmm and talking to most of my teachers over Zoom and through email. So uh, COVID kind of had a little bit to do with that, I think. Uh, a lot of the upperclassmen were telling me a lot of the things and procedures we were doing last year was way different because of COVID. The rules were stricter. Um, so I think that had a little bit to do with how different it was. And uh, I think the mandatory stuff that we have to do now is a little bit more than what I had to do in high school because in high school you would show up 9 a.m. for school, you would have school and then you'd have baseball practice after that. Those are the only two things you were required to do all day. You kind of had it planned out for you. Uh, in college, it's kind of, it's a little bit different with our base baseball schedule. We have weights in the morning and then we have mandatory practice for a couple hours. So those are the only two things uh, you're required to do every day technically but um you know there's a lot more that fills in in between that stuff as you guys know so on top of that i was living by myself for the first time as we talked about earlier i had to figure out how to do that a little bit so you know when you're trying to schedule all those things around bedtime kind of sneaks up on you each day sometimes yeah, without doubt. And you definitely were being challenged, which is a good thing. But knowing you, I'm really sure you tackled it head on. And I'm sure your apartment is pretty spotless as well. Uh, but something I talk a lot about is enjoying the process. You know, the days that no one sees you, the days that aren't all that exciting, aren't all that glamorous where people, you know, or see you living the life, so to say. But in the end, these small wins are really what set you up for these core memory big success, big success moments in the future. So for you, the preseason hustle would in fact set you up for that first game and your first opportunity to suit up as a collegiate athlete. Uh, being a freshman and coaches already having expectations for you, nonetheless, the whole town of Fernandina having expectations for you. How did you manage your nerves heading into that first game? And what was it like for you to finally see your biggest dream just brought into fruition? Uh, managing my nerves definitely wasn't too much of a challenge for me. Uh, I remember the first night, so we drove all the way to Tallahassee, playing Florida State University, top top ranked ACC team, bunch of Division One prospects, draft MLB draft prospects, all that thing. Freshman of the year, they were throwing at us. They had everything, and UNF was kind of a little bit of an underdog in that scenario, to say the least. And uh, so I went into it with high expectations, with bunch of confidence as we all were really like, what do we have to lose? Uh, I remember finding out that I was starting on a season opener. I was pretty excited. Uh, seeing my name on the lineup card, I did, I felt a little bit nervous, you know, as anyone would, but I knew that I was ready and I prepared myself. That's what I put, 
put in all the hard work for. So, um, yeah. you know, I a little nervous, but I overcame it pretty fast whenever I knew we were ready to go. Um, it was a close game, though, that, yeah. that opening day. <laughs> hey, yeah, we're, we're going to get to that one for sure. So uh, it's definitely one of those things that I feel like the nerves are healthy. Um, but also for you, again, it's the excitement. I feel like you were less nervous and more antsy, ready to get on the field. So when you are heading into those big games and those big moments where you've got to balance excitement, nerves, have a level head, be composed, while also perform your very best, can you share us what does an aid and sweat pregame preparation look like? Yeah, so I have a routine that I like to go through every day. Um, I do it at practice and game days to prepare my body to get ready to play. Um, I think it's really important to trust the process because I believe the process takes care of itself. You know, you can only control what you can control. So if you put the time in before and all your preparation you know, eventually pays off. So um, I think preparation is a big part of that. Um, I'm a little superstitious as well, I'll have to admit it, you know. Um, I have been since I was younger. Uh, if we won a game, you know, wouldn't wash the socks, which mom was never too happy about. That wasn't, wasn't good. I'm a little bit better now. I wash my socks all the time, but uh, I think um, you know, I just think that baseball is a very different sport and there's so many things you can't control. You know, if you're, if you're hitting and you fail seven out of 10 times, a little bit of a cliche saying, but you're doing pretty well. So, uh, you can't really control if you get a hit. Sometimes you might hit one hard right at somebody. It might be an out. Sometimes you might drop one in. So, you can't really control what goes on in the game, but you can control your preparation. So I think that's very important. Yeah, I love that, Aiden, uh, talking about preparation, control what you can control and trust the process. That's uh, a big thing for Nick Saban, I know, is trust in the process. And and every you know great performer has, you know whether it's a pregame routine or for a baseball game, board meeting, or even just a morning routine for that matter. But uh, you clearly had a plan that worked for you, and I'm sure – freshman year was very exciting for a lot of different reasons but what was your favorite moment from that freshman season and and what made that moment stand out uh my favorite moment from freshman year definitely opening night versus florida state uh i know i touched on it a little bit earlier but we're going in we're driving all the way to a big acc school they're top ranked in the country and we were the underdogs everybody knew it we were hearing it from the fans opening night, obviously. And uh, I think getting that win was huge for us. It really boosted all of our confidence. We didn't really know what we had uh, going for us last year. We had some older guys. We had some younger guys like myself coming in trying to step up. So we didn't really know how we were going to be. We all were kind of went into it with open minds, just put our heads down and, you know, keep working. And we got the win opening night. We were all like, oh my gosh, we could do this. Like we fit right in with these guys. There's a MLB draft prospects throwing on the mound tonight and we just beat them. We took them out in the second inning. Like, uh, I think that when I was able to contribute to the win, that made me feel even a little bit better because, um, you know, sometimes you do have some doubts in your mind. Everybody does, but <clears throat> I think it's very important to remain confident and we won that game that night. I got a couple of hits uh, in the last inning. It's a close game. Our six-year senior comes in out of the bullpen, and Florida State has their top of their lineup coming up. They're ready to go, and they get a couple guys on, move them over, score a couple runs. They start chipping away at their lead, and their uh, Florida State's fourth-year senior hits a ground ball to my left. I run over catch it, slip a little bit, turn around, make the throw to first base, and we ended up sealing off the ball game. So I think that was that was really special for me. I just remember going back to the hotel, spending time with all my teammates. We were all excited, jumping around, getting pumped up, you know. Uh, I got a bunch of call from my bunch of calls from family and friends that night too. So it was good hearing them. They were all congratulating me. I just remember that night laying in bed. It was like a dream really. Hmm. You can't really can't really explain it 
but except for that way, because <laughs> yeah. it, re- it really was, it was just a dream. Yeah, I can definitely understand. And like you said earlier, baseball is a game of failure and you rose to the occasion in that moment. So when you do perform and when you do rise to the occasion, exactly as you said, there's no true way to explain it, but the sensation's definitely like no other. Uh, so Aiden, as I have mentioned, you clearly being on this podcast and being a freshman on the varsity team and now a standout performer on your college baseball team, Everyone would probably say, you know, you just have this certain composure and swagger to you that most people would look your way or hear these awesome stories and say, ah, you know, he's just got it going on. He has it all figured out. But I do know everyone faces adversity as we're talking about here, whether it be on their own head or external factors that create a bump in the road, whatever it may be. As a flip side of that qu- that last question of, you know, your shining moment, over the last 15 years of playing this game, 20 years of life from middle school to high school and now college, have there been any challenges in your journey that you've faced that you've had to overcome and in turn really came out a better, stronger version of yourself? Yeah, there's definitely been challenges in baseball for sure. Um, it's a very up and down sport. You know, you can't get better every single day. So... Um, there's definitely been a lot of mistakes that I've made in the past, but, you know, I try to learn from them. I realize that nobody's perfect. So when you make a mistake, I think it's important to learn from it and try not to make the same mistake two times in a row. You know, that's where you get yourself in trouble when you keep repeating a mistake. And, um, you know, I strive for perfection. I know that it's, I realize that it's never going to happen because nobody's perfect, but you know, I, when I do make mistakes, I think it's important to learn from them. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. I mean, um, you know, I know there's a lot of people that see you as inspiration. At the end of the day, they know that you're human too. So, um, you know, at this point, you have, you know, you have your freshman season in the books, but your grind doesn't start there. Stop there, right? So you decide last summer to join the Northwoods baseball league which is basically a summer baseball league for collegiate baseball players um, all across the country and you end up getting sent to wisconsin to play for the uh, lacrosse loggers and move there for the summer of 2021 and something we love to talk about in this podcast is you know hotbeds of talent and where people surround themselves with other like-minded people and kind of a certain environment in order to kind of take their um, whatever talent there is to the next level. So can you share with us a little bit more about that experience and, and maybe what, what it was like in Wisconsin for you last summer? Yeah, so the Northwoods League is filled with collegiate baseball players from across the country, from every level, um, Division One, Division Two, all the way down to NAIA. Uh, they recruit players from across the country to go stay up there and play for their team. It's kind of, it's a little bit like minor league baseball or independent baseball. Um, but it was a blast. I had a, mm-hmm. I had so much fun. I met a lot of great people up there. Uh, first class organization. I played for the lacrosse loggers up there. It was, I really was blessed to play for them. It was a once in a lifetime experience. Um, it's funny story about that. My, coach i was talking to him last year about playing summer ball i did want to go play summer ball somewhere after our season concluded and he was kind of getting on and off with me about it and one day he called me into his office and he said hey i'm going to send you up to wisconsin and i looked at him a little bit crazy i was like coach where's wisconsin i don't even know where that is (laughs) i grew up playing summer ball and i've only played florida and georgia those are the two places I've traveled to play baseball before and my coach is in there telling me I was he was sending me all the way across the country by myself and I was like I mean yeah I'm excited I'll go I I was it was pretty funny story how it happened but um you know it was it was awesome this summer up there I made a bunch of lifelong friends that I still talk to this day and you know had a bunch of good good experiences there's a lot of long bus rides we had the one bus ride that was from La Crosse to Bismarck, North Dakota, which was over seven hours. And we had to play that night too. It was brutal. Yeah, that was, it was, we had some tight muscles. That's for sure. We had to do a little bit of extra warming up. It was awesome. Yeah. But, uh, 
<clears throat> it's definitely not what you want to hear when you're coming into coach's office trying to get recruited is, you know, you got a one way to Wisconsin. Yeah. See you leave Florida, go hang out, spend three months in Wisconsin, but definitely a great way to expand your game in the off season. Obviously is again, something I admire so much is, you know, somebody's trying to give you time to rest, time to go recuperate. Um, I, w- I don't want to call it wasted time, but go take some time, take it easy. And you were looking to get right back after and keep pushing. So I know you've always had a training program through the years, but this time you spent in Wisconsin was also when you really found a passion for the gym. It really started to serve a higher purpose than just being training or strength training or helping you swing the bat or throw the ball harder. Uh, it really became a place you could find peace after a tough game, tough practice, or missing your friends and family while you were up there in Wisconsin. So can you share some insight into the love you found for the gym and just kind of how it's helped you continue to not only look and feel your best, but offer an outlet to kind of step away whenever you do feel a little off or out of it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, before this summer, I kind of worked out, like you said, I needed to get bigger, faster, and stronger to play baseball. But uh, this summer, we were actually given a free gym membership to Anytime Fitness for the lacrosse loggers. They provided us with that, which was awesome. And I found myself in the gym more often times than not this summer. It was a good place for me to step away, clear my mind. You know, if we had a tough loss, I would head over to the gym. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd head over to the gym, you know, do some yoga, ride the bike, walk on the treadmill, try and do something pro- productive while I'm trying to clear my head. Uh, after a, a tough game, I would end up, you know, spending a bunch of time in the gym with my teammate. Uh, Tony Roca. We were workout buddies. We would work out every morning before early work and before the game. So, you know, I spent a lot of time in the gym this summer. It's a great place. Um, I think one of the things that makes the gym so great is it takes consistency to see results. Uh, it's not, it's not a place where you can just go in and, you know, see instant results. You have to put the time in. Uh, and I think consistency is key and a lot of things in life, especially the gym. Definitely agree, and I love that delayed gratification, and that's why I love sports and business so much is because it's one of those things that you can't fake it, and you do have to be consistent. Uh, So nonetheless, clearly, working out, doing all that lifting paid off as you hit your first collegiate home run while you were up there playing for the loggers. Not only did you hit your first collegiate home run, But again, your mom was able to be there in-house just visiting for a few days out of the summer and you managed to smack a homer. So you talked earlier about your mom again and the huge influence she's had on you. So to have your home run with her in the stadium is quite poetic. So we got to touch on that. Can you tell us about that sensation of hitting your second home run ever and also getting to have those closest to you in the building? Yeah, that was awesome. So my mom, my little sister, and my girlfriend made the they drove up to Wisconsin. They made the cross country trip for a little bit over a week to come watch me play this summer. And it was the first night that they were there. And I don't know, I got a hold of one and it started <laughs> flying. I don't really know. It must have been on accident. Uh, all my friends know me. Close your eyes and swing. Exactly. Sometimes it just happens like that. But uh, it was awesome. It was the first night they were there and I ended up getting a hold of one. So it was pretty special. Uh, a funny story about that night too is uh, in lacrosse they had special like game nights and stuff at the at the ballpark where people could win prizes and stuff like that and that particular night was bingo night at the ballpark and so upon entry they would give everyone a bingo card and you would play baseball bingo so if someone got a base hit you would put an X down if someone walked or struck out you would put an X down you know bingo rules and my girlfriend, she had uh, every row crossed out and all she needed was a home run left. And I provided the winning bingo card. Is, you know, it sounds a little bit made up, but I promise Again, that's how it happened. It was pretty awesome. Movie-like moments, man. You, th- th- hey, who knows? Maybe there's an Aiden Sweat movie in the works one of these days, maybe, somewhere down the road. Maybe. The, uh, a couple weeks, a couple days later actually was Father's Day. And I hit my second home run of the summer. Two home runs in one week. I was, I don't know what was going on, but Through it was the moon. pretty awesome Father's Day present for Dad to hit one for him. So that was pretty cool too. Yeah, it's fantastic. And and it sounds like Wisconsin was a great, you know, kind of bow on the end of what it was a great freshman year of college experience, and then to be able to experience Wisconsin on top of that. So now, you know, back at UNF, you're a sophomore. 
you know, tell us a little bit about kind of the day in the life of being a college division one athlete, you know, balancing sports, school, you know, just having a normal college life. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot that goes on. Definitely. Um, my day in the life right now is pr pretty s similar every single day. Uh, wake up, make a good breakfast, eat some eggs, peanut butter toast is what I'm rolling with right now. Um, after breakfast, you got to pack your bags, get some s schoolwork done before you leave quick, check the emails, make sure nothing's due. And then you pack up and head to the campus for morning workouts for the baseball team. Me and my roommate usually carpool over there. Um, we got workouts in the morning for about an hour. Then once you get done with that, you have have a few hours in between workouts and practice time to get some stuff done. Uh, I usually take this time to knock out some emails, do any meetings that I have to do, finish some homework. Uh, it's a little bit easier for me to split up the, my assignments throughout the day because if I try to sit down at night and do them all at once, it just doesn't get done. So uh, I use that time to do some homework before practice. Um, right before practice, I head over to the training room actually, get some treatment done. It's important to do, uh, do that stuff because you know you gotta keep your body healthy, healthy for the season. And uh, head over to the training room, get some treatment there. Once uh, head back for practice, once practice is done, uh, head home, you know, make some dinner, chicken and rice, some tacos. Dinner dinner tonight is tacos, so I'm pretty <laughs> excited about that. Uh, get some chores done around the house. This is, you got a couple hours before bed, so, you know, fill the dishwasher, do the laundry, things like that. So, you know, uh, I have a, I've been having a nighttime routine that I've start, started recently as well. Some yoga and reading too, so. Mm. Little time to yourself, it's pretty awesome. And then, you know, get ready for bed, do it all again the next day. That's the beauty of it. Come back and get to do it all again the next day. But nonetheless, Aiden, it's been a real pleasure having you here today. A conversation I hold close to my heart is in fall of 2021, me and you met up for dinner and we both just had this surreal realization of how crazy it is, how far we've come, you know, to just be two guys chasing our dreams, having the willingness to put in the work, make it a reality, having great mentors like Brian, like your coaches, like all these people that we've got to encounter. So it's just crazy to think how far we've come, but you know, you truly encompass everything grit.org stands for and I'm so happy you can be a part of what we're doing here. When it comes back to our young athlete guests like yourself, something we find really exciting at the Grit.org podcast is being able to have you back on in the future to continue to tell your story and you just, you know, keep sharing how through this hard work and dedication, you know, you can build more grit, make it possible to really reach any goal that you have in your mind. So really hope you continue to keep doing what you're doing and join us in the future. But Listeners at home, of course, keep an eye out for this guy. You might see him on our channel, might see him on ESPN, and I can promise you probably find him on draft night one day. So best of luck, my friend. Before we wrap up, just one last question for you, Aiden. As we ask all of our guests this question, what part of the Grit Creed resonates most with you and why? Uh, part of the Grit Creed that resonates with me the most is I will try and try and try again. Uh, I take great pride in never giving up in anything. All my friends know that I'm pretty stubborn, whether it's, you know, thumb wrestling or playing ping, playing ping pong, I don't like to lose. So I believe in trying, trying your hardest in everything that you do. Um, I think my dad instilled that in me when I was younger, whether it was working with him at his job or, you know, doing yard work, he made sure we fin finished the job 100%. So I think that's a part of the great creed that resonates with me the most. Yeah, you can achieve what you believe, and you're definitely a true case of that. So, Aiden, again, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much again for being here. Thank you guys for having me on. This is my first podcast. Uh, really humbled to be able to talk about baseball and how much I love the game and stuff, so I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, that's a wrap today here at the Grit.org podcast. Please check out our other episodes. Leave us a comment. Tell us something you enjoyed about Aiden's story. Share this with someone you think it would resonate with or impact. As always, we appreciate you tuning in for another episode of the Grit.org podcast.